Hi, I'm Bob Hockmuth, County Agent with the University of Florida IFAS Extension, and with me today is Dr. Norm Lepla, our Integrated Pest Management Specialist at the University of Florida, and we're here today to talk about integrated pest management and a project here at the center in Live Oak where we are trying to implement a program and be able to teach uh, farmers how to adopt those practices on their own. Norm, let's start with perhaps the first question. What exactly is integrated pest management? Really common sense, Bob. The, it's the way we manage pests with minimum risk by using practices that are complex perhaps, coordinated, they require a systematic approach, but the main thing is they have to be economical. Farmers and ranchers must be able to implement these IPM practices in a way that they can still have a profitable uh, situation. The main thing is to protect our people, their resources, and the environment. That's what IPM is as a goal. And what are some of the strategies that would be developed in an integrated pest management program? Well, it's kind of a, a, a hierarchy. First, you start with identifying the pests. A lot of people misidentify pests, but the University of Florida IFAS has ways to help with that in diagnostics. But once you know your pest, then you need to know your beneficials. When you know the complex of organisms in a crop, you're able to monitor or to sample or to scout and track what's going on. Once you reach a threshold, which is relatively artificial but must be established for a site, then that damage threshold is really a time when practices in IPM have to be selected and implemented. And those should be lowest risk, as I said before, and things that are economical and effective. Good. We're, um, we're here mainly going to be talking about an integrated pest management program for a lot of our crops, field crops and vegetables and fruits, but I know you have a, a much broader integrated pest management program on a statewide basis. And mm -hmm. So what are some of the statewide goals of your IPM program? Well, our program covers everything from agriculture, animals, plants, all the way into structures, buildings, and schools. The whole waterfront of where pests occur and must be controlled. But I must say, this particular situation here is really, really important to us because we're able to leave the classroom and implement some of our ideas and have our objectives realized. And those objectives are to coordinate and communicate what we learn, to train and teach people, particularly our extension uh, colleagues, how to do these practices, and then finally to work together to get them established on farms and ranches. I know I've been really excited about the opportunity to put this program together here at the Suwannee Valley Agricultural Extension Center where we are today near, near Live Oak and um, we had an opportunity to put together a grant proposal that we're, we were able to get some funding to create this particular site which is uh, going to be able to teach IPM at the center and uh, that is our Living Extension IPM Laboratory, mm -hmm. kind of a long uh, name for our, uh, our project. However, it really is basically just teaching farmers and other in interested individuals how to use maybe a whole farm approach to adopting integrated pest management. So we've been, we've been really excited about the opportunities to put that together. When we put the project together, I'd like you to kind of just describe a little bit some of the funding partners that mm -hmm. we had an opportunity to, to, uh, to work together on this project with. Well, again, it's recognized that a lot of our, our uh, training and education is in the classroom. And the funding came from USDA, NIFA, National Institute of Food and Agriculture, uh, grants for state IPM programs. This is a unique situation. Our state here in Florida and your program here was funded to move from the classroom to hands-on uh, knowledge, training, about pests and pest management. We then were able to get support from our IFAS extension uh, program and also from partners here in the area, particularly the, uh, the Water Conservation District here in, in Suwannee. But in addition to them, the Natural Resource Conservation Service is a, is a part of it. The Florida Department of Agriculture and the Office of Ag Water Policy is a part of it. Our local water management district has uh, representation on the, uh, on the group as well. And so there's a, a number of agencies. 
One of the other agency uh, representations here is the uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission mm -hmm. for uh, Florida. So we've had a lot of different people that have been uh, have been involved. I think the the three primary objectives of putting this project together, in my mind, were number one to create this teaching opportunity. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's one thing to go to a classroom and a PowerPoint presentation, but it's another thing to be out on an actual farm and to be able to experience what's going on uh, at that farm. So we had that opportunity to develop this site. And then the, certainly the next one from an extension standpoint is we want to be able to teach farmers what what kinds of practices would be available to them and how they would adopt those practices on their farm. The final thing is that we want this to be a sustainable network in the long run. We want to be able to have partners that see a vision in the future so that we can continue this uh, well into the future way after the the so-called grant funding part of it is is done. We want to be able to have a sustainable network. So all of those are really, really Im important. I know we've had a lot of different audiences in here already as uh, early in the career of this project. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the target audiences that we've mentioned farmers, but it's not only for farmers, no, is it? That really excites me. This Living Extension IPM Field Laboratory is a great opportunity. It's only about an hour drive from the Gainesville campus, so we get graduate students, undergraduate students, uh, we even get uh, secondary school students. Certainly 4-H is a big one. We love 4-H. Yes. Uh, you mentioned farmers and ranchers, but, but they go a wide range. I mean, these are small farmers. They're people who do organic farming, farmers market uh, people. Uh, just on and on, just about anybody who's interested in farming or ranching can come here and learn some techniques, take them back, and, and have a better situation on their farm. I know that uh, when we develop this, the target is the farmers, and then all of a sudden some of our county extension agents yeah. and some of the garden clubs realize, well, hey, I think I can adopt some of those practices even in my own yard. And so yeah. we, have a, we have also had maybe an unexpectedly high interest among master gardeners, uh, yeah. part of our University of Florida Extension system, uh, and other kinds of, uh, of garden groups. Uh, also in this area and many areas of the state, there are folks that own land, maybe not necessarily farming, but, but want to be able to implement some of these practices mm -hmm. on, their, uh, on, on their own land. So that's what we've been able to put together here. Um, I would really love to be able to share with the viewers here about our, about our site on the farm here and all of the different components that we put together and I'd like to be able to do that next.